Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we are very pleased that you are interested in the latest features and improvements of the Performer Suite. My name is Alex, and I'm going to introduce you some of the new features in version 24.1. But first of all, I would like to thank all of our clients who has given us valuable input in the form of feature requests, feedback, or bug reports. Many of the suggestions have been implemented in the new version. All right, so let's waste no time and start with the webinar. We will start with some basic information regarding the update. So the new version was published a few weeks ago and you received the new setup or maybe your colleagues uh, via mail. You can also download the setup of the new version in the client portal if you already created a user. Please pay attention to the instructions in the email. So create a backup before the update to avoid data loss. And the minimum version from which you can update to 24.1 is 22.2. After the update, you must also update the function modules as we have optimized these as part of the new version. All right, so now let's move to the first feature of the Performer Suite. I, will, I want to start with the improvement in the DocuPerformer. All right, so imagine the following scenario. You don't have to worry at all about documentation creation. You can simply sit back and be confident that there is an up-to-date documentation available in a central place. This is exactly what the first feature offers. In the Performer Suite, you can now also select individual SAP objects and schedule them for documentation. So to do this, you must first select SAP objects within the Performer Suite. You can then uh, set up some uh, settings like the language, the level of detail, and so on. And the next step, you have to configure the automation tool. So you have to specify the time of the documentation and the storage location. And voila, now you have up-to-date documentation that your colleagues can benefit from. So let's take a look at the individual steps in the tools. Therefore, I will open the Performer Suite. So as you saw on the slide, first of all, we have to select objects we want to schedule for documentation. So therefore, I will um, search for specific objects. Let me just copy those object names. I will use the multi-line filter here in the entity grid, and then I will filter for those objects. All right. So then I can select the objects and I can open the context menu of those objects and go to create documentation. And I have to select the option schedule documentation. So if I click on this option, the objects will be assigned for the scheduled documentation. And I can find those objects in the area administration, documentation, documentation scheduling. As you can see, those three objects are now assigned for this uh, work kind of documentation. Um, it is also possible to add more objects from this context. So I can click on this plus button. And then as you can see, I can also select other systems which are licensed, for example, HANA. So I will also select a calculation view, for example, um, this one, Purchase Order Overview, and then I can click on Select. For each selected object, the settings can now be configured. So, for example, the level of detail. So I can select um, whether I want to have a really detailed documentation if I select this settings variant, or I can also select the business settings variant to have a minimized um, documentation or to, re um, to reduce the level of detail for my query documentation. Maybe I want to have a German query documentation, so I can also select the documentation language um, as German. And here you see also the Confluence page. So if I want to upload those documentation in Confluence, I can also do it by selecting here um, the Confluence page. So in this example, I don't need those Confluence, Confluence updates, so I will delete this. Okay, so that's it. Um, next, we have to go to the automation tool, as you saw on this slide. So I will open the automation tool. 
And yes, this is the automation tool. And you have to open the automation tool as an administrator. And three steps are necessary within the automation tool. So if you have never used this tool before, you must first install and run Windows services. So you have to click here on Install Services and then on Start Services. Those services are responsible for starting the export in the background. This is the reason why you have to open the tool as an administrator. Next, you have to enter login data for the systems from which the previously selected objects originate. So in my example, I selected objects from my A4HBW system. So I will insert my username, my password. And I also selected a calculation view from my HANA system. So same here. I will check if everything is correct. Yes, it is. Perfect. And last but not least, a path must be defined. So here I can select whether I want to go with the standard path, so a local path, a just standard Windows path, or a Confluence integration. So I will go with the standard path, and here I can schedule the time. So for example, I can say that I want to create a documentation every day, and the time should be, um, let's say... 11, 14, 11. Okay, perfect. So now I click check and save once again because I now also selected the path and I um, did some changes regarding the scheduling. So I would just click on check and save. And as you can see, the next doc will, um, will happen at 14, 11. This is information which the automation tool um, provides to me. Okay, so the export will take about two minutes. To kill some time, we can briefly talk about the automation tool and our recommendations. So therefore, I will go back to the presentation. The automation tool should run on a continu continuously running central server as we recommend running the export, but also the synchronization that can be also automated at night. So. It makes sense if you just know you wake up, you start your computer and you know there is an up-to-date documentation in a specific folder. Um, the server does not necessarily have to be the server on which the SQL server of the Performer Suite database is located. Um, the automation tool should also not be used by every user. So the admin should set up and use the automation tool centrally. Um, of course, the... Um, user can can select objects within the performer suite for the scheduling but the scheduling itself and the automation tool should be um, should be done by the admin um, we recommend that you um, not use real sap user um, so i inserted a sap user the login data and it makes sense that you don't use a real sap user but that you create a dedicated sap user for which the password does not change because of course, if the password is, if you change the password and you didn't um, edit the password in the automation tool, then it's not possible to connect with the system and the export will fail. Okay, so let's check the time, 14.11. So I will go now to the folder. So this is the folder I defined, generated, automated export. And as you can see, there are already files located in these folders. So query, for example, let me open the query. And as you can see, that's my query documentation. So here you see the um, query documentation with some comments. You can also see the variables. It's a German documentation, as you can see here, variablen, because I selected the German language. And as you can also see, it is uh, the level of detail is reduced. So I don't see the configuration, the settings of this calculated key figure, um, but just I, I only see the formula. Okay, so everything works worked fine. So as you can see, we have also a file here and also a CDS view here. And last but not least, also the calculation view in this folder. In the next step, of course, you can establish a process that archives that documentation so that you can also do things like version comparisons. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic. I will go back to my presentation and the following feature is intended to improve transparency in ABAP development. 
because the lack of transparency mainly relates to the dependencies between the ABAP objects. And this leads to increased effort for topics like troubleshooting or implementing change requests. So the new ABAP relations function, which we implemented, helps with these problems. So during the BW or ERP synchronization, the entire ABAP coding of the system will be passed. The coding is searched for keywords like select for tables and views, or call function for function modules, or call method for methods of classes, and so on. And the found relations of ABAP and DEDIC objects are extracted from the code and written to our database, as you can see here. So we have here the source object and the target object. And this is how we store the relations between the ABAP objects in our database. Okay, so let's take a look how the Performer Suite visualizes this information. Therefore, I will open the Performer Suite once again. And the first thing you have to do, you have to um, execute the synchronization and you have to activate this option, ABAP relations, because then we will do all the things I described before. After the, after the um, synchronization, you will be able to execute the function ABAP relation. So I will first analyze this function module in this case. So I will right click on this object. And as you can see, this is the new function we're offering, ABAP relations. So you can click on this and click on OK. And as you can see, the dependencies are displayed in this tree view. So we see that this function module calls these, uh, these tables for example, but also this method of um, the factory method of this class um, and other function modules and so on. The ABAP objects found can of course also call other ABAP objects and we can also resolve these complex and nested cases. So let's take a look at complex objects. So I will um, analyze this function module. I will click on ABAP relations and as you can see, in this case, we find this include. This include is called via this function module. And this include also calls or select those tables and this view. And then we have here report. This report selects those tables and so on. As you can see, this is a really nested example. Um, and we are also able to handle those complex edge cases. The last thing I want to show to you before I move on, um, this function can also be called from the BW data flow. So I've already performed a lookup scan in this case. And as you can see, uh, we found in a transformation a call of a function module, this unit conversion with factor fun function module. I can click on this button and I can directly jump to the ABAP relation function. So we created a link between those two functions. Okay, as you can see, the transparency in this black box ABAP coding is increased by the new function. And this function is the first attempt and we will check how we can enhance it further. So feel free to try it out and you can give us some feedback. It's really helpful for us. All right, so let's take a look of four further improvements in the version 24.1. First, I would like to talk about Datasphere. In the previous versions, we were already able to document Datasphere objects, such as views, tables, intelligent lookups, and so on. And it's also possible to um, open the data flow of views and so on. In the new version, it is also possible to execute the analysis function, analyze, compare for views, local and remote tables, and intelligent lookups. So, I can just jump to this function. As you can see, I analyzed this view and now I see here the um, dimensions. I could also analyze a view with um, measures and also with associations. And like always, if you use this function, you always have the possibility to compare the object. So I can go to comparison mode. On the right side, there will be a new uh, workspace where I can drag and drop objects. So here you see also some measures and you see also um, the defined associations on this view. 
So please contact us if you would like to test the data sphere connector um, free of charge. This is possible. Okay, so let's move on to the next improvement. This is about offering new columns and new information in existing analysis functions. We will start with the function data loads and usages. You can use this function to check how often queries have been executed in a certain period of time. Now you can also see which SAP user executed this query the last time. So this was a feature request from a client. That's the reason why we implement it here and why you um, get more insights in this function. We also offer new columns for the function system comparison. So this function can be used to compare systems regarding selected object types. So in this example, I selected queries and ADSOs. Now you can also activate more language dependent columns. So for example, the German, English, French description can be inserted to the grid via the column chooser. In the former releases, it was only possible to work with one language and the language always depend, depend on the selected UI language, so German or English. So now you can also select more languages. Also a feature request from our client. Let's move on to the last improvement I want to show you today regarding Performer Suite, this time about query views. So a client wanted to find out for his housekeeping activities whether query views are used in BO AFO reports, so analysis for office reports. These query views are now displayed in the function list data sources. So if I analyze an analysis for office report, I will see now also this query view. It was not possible in the past. And we also display this data source in the function analyze compare. All right, so now let's continue with the roadmap. What are we planning for the next releases? So first of all, we want to improve the existing function document data flow. This function can be found here, document data flow. And if you activate this function and then you document a composite provider, for example, not only the composite provider will be documented, but also the ADSOs, the part provider and the info sources and the data sources and so on. So the entire data flow. And we want the function to be able to be started from objects such as SSC stories. So you start from an SSC story, we document the story, the model, the query, and so on. And the aim is to document an entire data model more quickly so that you don't need to create first things like scenarios. Okay, so with data sphere, we will support further object types. Analytic models, a really important object type in data sphere, but also task chains. We will also offer the where used analysis. So you will be able to analyze, for example, or to check the usage of VW objects in remote tables within a data sphere. We will also support the planning models in SAC. And in S4HANA, we are currently working on the support on the new CDS entity views, which we currently do not fully support. And in the future, it should be possible to document user-defined theory fields. So as you can see, we are working on further improving transparency in SAP data analytics. But here's the thing, it's not just you who benefits from improved transparency, but also your colleagues from business departments. So business users only have a very limited view on the of the technology underneath the dashboards and reports they use. As a result, they have as a result they have to involve IT directly for certain technical questions. Here are a few examples of what these questions are. So which dashboards, reports are available for my subject area? How is the report I am working with structured? How is a key figure calculated? From which sources does the data for my report or key figure come? Or who's responsible for the report? To empower business users to answer such, such questions independently, we have a second product on the market, the Enterprise Glossary. And the Enterprise Glossary is on an on-premises data catalog that periodically integrates SMP metadata so business users can access 
this data catalog and answer the previously asked questions by themselves. So as you can see, you can just simply jump on this entry in within the enterprise glossary, this query, for example. Um, it is really easy to understand because we offer in default templates. You can also add more information um, like the responsible person and so on, the data owner. You can also check the usage within SAC, for example. Then you have also a data lineage functionality in order to check the data flow, like you know it um, from the performer suite. You can also see that you can map or create a relation between your BW data sources and some S4 tables, for example, so you can define the source. And last but not least, you can also resolve the formula of complex key figures. For example, as you can see here, I resolved the formula of this nested key figure, and I can also check this key figure in this driver tree. So the goal is to reduce IT dependency, increase self-service and optimize metadata management. And as you can see on this slide, those are the supported connectors and we are working on Power BI data sphere and ERP. So if this sounds exciting, you can test the enterprise glossary for several months. Um, it's a free POC. We also support you in workshops to work out use case and requirements. So feel free to contact us for web session in order to present you it in more detail. Okay, so let's move on to the last part of this webinar. So we will upload all webinars to our YouTube channel. If you were unfamiliar with some functions or were confused by options like settings variant or confluence integration, I recommend our free video course in our Blue Intelligence Academy. So here you can simply go to our Blue Intelligence Academy and you can then sign up for, for example, the system course and get a certification if you finish this course. All new features, changes, and bug fixes are listed in the version history. So you can simply go to the version history in order to check all the new features, because of course I only showed you the highlights. And if you have any questions or problems with the update, feel free to contact our help desk. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you for your attention. I hope you will join us for future webinars as well. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye-bye.